Good morning. This is another headline that we weren't supposed to see for decades, if ever. It just wasn't supposed to happen. John Deere is our number one manufacturer of farm equipment, and they just announced another round of layoffs across their plants. Deere says the problem is collapsing demand for farm machinery, driven by falling prices for agricultural products. Overall projections are down 18% for food prices in 2024, which follows a 5% drop last year. Since 2022, corn prices are down by 37%, soybeans are off 24, and wheat is lower by 35%. Everything about this news should be surprising to investors in the United States, and shockingly so to farmers themselves and to John Deere. That's because there was a bulletproof investment thesis for U.S. farms and equipment. Everybody was all in, shoveling billions of dollars into the companies for farm equipment, fertilizers, and farmland. China was always a problem. China has over a billion people, and they were making money. Books like these got popular, Who Will Feed China?, which argues that China's growing demand for food would cause global prices to skyrocket. China's lack of good farmland and water was going to lead to food shortages, and environmental catastrophe. This was the take from Politico, and they concluded that the United Nations goal to eradicate hunger is looking a lot less likely. This is a 10-page report from McKinsey, full of interesting graphs and charts about the acute problems we are facing. McKinsey's report was August 2022. That was the theme, and it was very simple to understand. China has a food security problem, but they also have money. So instead of going hungry, they're going to be big buyers of food from global markets. The developing world will face widespread famine as a result, and it follows that the U.S. will be called upon to provide even more of the food and the capital equipment to supply the markets. Bill Gates went in big, buying up hundreds of thousands of shares of John Deere, making him the largest shareholder there. Bill Gates was also a huge buyer of farmland, and having Bill Gates' name in the headlines helped drive the theme. Private equity and venture capital firms were buying up farmland across the country. Farmland bought by investment companies more than tripled over 15 years. And here's the idea again. The world will be short of the food it needs. We need to produce 60% more food in the next 25 years compared to today. Their buying drove up the price for U.S. farmland, more than doubling to over $5,400 per acre. Big tech investors also piled into indoor vertical farming. There's Bill Gates again, Bezos from Amazon, Google. They were betting that they would save the world and make large profits in the process, says here. Industry giants are slowly following in their footsteps. This is Barron's. Barron's is a publication of the Wall Street Journal. World hunger is going up, severe weather problems in the United States and Africa, and these were big problems even before the Ukraine war, which spiked prices again. Now it's an unprecedented global hunger crisis, according to the United Nations. And here are some companies that Barron's recommends that are going to benefit from all these problems in the global ag sector. Deere makes farm equipment, CNH is Case New Holland, also an equipment maker. And here they make the same point as before. Deer and Case are using high tech to increase productivity, which is critical to the problem of needing 60% more food over the next three decades or so. Deer is dominant with more than 6,000 dealers in over 100 countries. This Barron's article was July 2022, just two years ago then, and already the tide is going out. Farm prices are falling, and John Deere is laying off. The indoor vertical farming investments have gone to zero, basically. In 2020, the industry in Europe brought in $750 million in venture capital funding. Now most of those companies are bankrupt. At least 15 are out of business now. So all the smart money that was plowed into that has gone away. Global food prices are falling, and our fancy indoor farms are going out of business because the food shortages never came. 
This headline here sums up what happened instead. Global food production boomed. The average Chinese now consumes more protein than the typical American. And that wasn't supposed to happen at all, ever, without blowing up the whole world. But it did happen. Back to John Deere. If you knew in advance that the world would be growing much more food than anyone thought, you might conclude that John Deere farm tractors is the reason why. The analysis by Barron's, the strong buy recommendations on the biggest fertilizer and farming equipment names, that was how we must have gotten through the food supply problems that looked so impossible, so daunting just a few years ago. But the global ag boom happened despite deer, not because of them. This is a website, madeinchina.com. If you're a sourcing manager or a buyer for any company in the world, you already know about this website. And it's just what it looks like. Put anything you want in that search bar and it'll give you the Chinese factories that you can call. So let's put in farm tractors and sort again only for manufacturers. We don't want to talk to trade companies. We just want the people who build farm tractors. And there we go. Over a hundred pages of Chinese companies not named John Deere or Case New Holland. There on the left under city shows us where these Chinese companies are. And we see lots of cities in Shandong province. We've got dozens of other factories here in Hunan province too. The biggest factory in the world for farm equipment is about 40 miles that way. And if you're one of John Deere's 6,000 dealers around the world and you're wondering why your phone isn't ringing while somehow all this food is being grown, you can look at the prices on Made in China and you'll wonder no more. These prices are usually the X-Works price and they don't include shipping. But you can see how the prices of John Deere equipment stack up against what Chinese factories charge. In any market where Chinese companies aren't specifically targeted by high tariffs or import bans, John Deere and Case have no chance head-to-head -head against Chinese farm equipment companies. So these big investment themes have broken down. All the smart investors who poured billions of dollars into this thesis, their investments are producing negative returns now. What do we suppose will happen next then? Venture capital bid up the price of farmland to record highs when they believed that U.S. farms were a cannot miss investment in a world that would go hungry without them. The prices for farmland in the United States keep rising, even though the value of farm product is falling while costs to run those farms are going up. VC and private equity is not patient capital if the investments are losing money. They're looking to get out. We should look for private equity to be selling their land holdings then. And when that selling starts, it will become a tsunami. So if you're thinking about it, you need to make sure to sell before these guys decide to. And if you're not thinking about it, you should be. This is Yangshua, Guangxi province. Be good.